Welcome back to DTN. We have a lot to cover this week. First of all, we are very close to this quarter ending. That means we are almost ready for our last nine weeks of school. This grinding period will end on March 12th, which means we will be on the downhill slope. It also means we are close to spring break. Spring break will be March 29th through April 2nd. Which is 28 days away. And only 16 school days. We are so close. Also, we are ready to celebrate Read Across America this week. There will be plenty of dress-up days. Today is Mini Colored Monday, so wear as many colors as you can. Tomorrow will be themed towards Fox and the Socks, so wear your craziest, wackiest socks you can find. I already have mine picked out. Wednesday is Cat in the Hat Day. Wear all the red and black you can find. Maybe we will see a cat in the hat today. Last, Thursday is the best dress. You are going to dress your best because we have spring pictures. I can't wait to see how everybody dresses up. So the last episode we were able to air, we got to see Braylon snow dance. And let's send a huge shout out to Braylon because he had the snow dance and he had a great weather prediction. Word, even though I have never seen a snow dance like that. Um, I don't think anybody has actually... I wonder what he has cooking up for today. Let's go head over to Ready for Recess with Braylon and see what the weather has in store for us this week. Thank you to our sponsors, Capstar Bank, for supporting DTN. For any of your banking needs, please go visit Capstar Bank Manchester, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hey guys, welcome to this edition of Ready for Recess with Balin. Truly the best weatherman the earth has ever, ever seen. You know, with your eyes. Okay. This Monday, you're going to definitely need your rain jacket as we will have showers all day and the high will be 57 degrees with the low at night being 47 degrees. <clears throat> Today, you're going to still need your rain jacket <clears throat> as there will be showers at certain parts of the day we're still going to stay around 57 degrees for the high and drop down to 41 degrees at night. Witness day, we're actually going to see a bit of the sun and it will be partly cloudy for most of the day with the high being 56 degrees and the low will actually tip down in the 30s at 36 degrees. Thursday, we, we go back to having more showers throughout the day. So don't forget your rain jacket. We're still going to be at about 57 degrees, high being 38. 38 degrees for low. Back to y'all in the studio. Well, the cat came back, and what do you know? You heard a crowd shout, go down. Welcome to On This Day with Isaiah and Jasmine. Today we are going to focus on. Dr. Seuss, since we are celebrating Read Across America. Read Across America is to celebrate the joy of reading and also one of the most famous children's book authors, Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss's birthday will actually be tomorrow, March 2nd. If Dr. Seuss were still alive today, he'd be 117 years old. Dr. Seuss wrote his first children's book in 1937, titled I Think I, Think I Saw in Mulberry Street. Now we are going to share some fun facts that we have researched on Dr. Seuss. To start, Dr. Seuss was born in Springfield, Massachusetts on March 2, 1904. Dr. Seuss credited his love to verse to his mother when he was a child. She would make up rhymes based on pie flavors to entertain him. Dr. Seuss was but at least likely to succeed by his classmates at Dartmouth. Dr. Seuss Add a doctor to his name as a consolation to his father who hoped he would practice medicine. Dr. Seuss was granted an honorary doctorate by his alma mater, Dartmouth, in 1956. Dr. Seuss liked, 
thinks that Seuss rhymes with Mother Goose, so he adopted the, the pronunciation. Dr. Seuss began creating children's books because it was one of the very few creative projects that was prohibited by his advertising contract. Dr. Seuss's first book was rejected 27 times before it finally went into the printing press. Supposedly, Dr. Seuss would write and discard between 500 to 1,000 pages during the first draft of a picture book. Dr. Seuss would write 4 to 8 hours every day. In 1942, Dr. Seuss began creating political posters encouraging America to enter the war. During World War II, he enlisted into the army and was sent to Hollywood to, to produce propaganda cartoons featuring the military. Horton Hears a Who was inspired by Dr. Seuss's time in Japan. It was published in 1954. Dr. Seuss met his wife, Helen Palmer, when they attended Oxford University in 1926. While attending Oxford, he was working on a Master's of Arts degree in English, but he never completed his studies. Dr. Seuss had a embarrassing encounter on stage with President Theodore Roosevelt. This gave Dr. Seuss acute f stage fright, and he refused to appear on TV or give speeches. Dr. Seuss has proven, proven what hard work can do. With his hard work and determination, he was able to become a successful children's author with the timeless creations that are still read to children across America today. He's actually a really inspiring dude. Thank you for watching this week's history segment. Don't forget to pick up a good book to read this week in honor of Dr. Seuss. Read Read to your parents, your teacher, or to yourself. Never stop reading. Are you looking to buy or sell your home in the Manchester area? If you are, please go visit our friends and sponsors at Remax First Realty in Manchester. So do the other. I don't know what's hot. No, I'll lava you. Did you hear the joke about the roof? No, tell me. Never mind, it's over your head. No, it's not. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. What do you call it when your nose is stuffy at the rodeo? A cold, I guess? Nope. Cow boogie! Yeah! Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> what is red and bad for your teeth? Some red skittles. A brick. What did the duck say when he brought his chapstick? How much is it? Hold on. Put it on my bill. <laughs> we hope you have enjoyed this episode of DTN. Don't forget about our dress up days next week. Also, don't forget that we have spring picture day on Thursday, March 4th. And now Sabrina will leave you with your quote for the week. Kind words do not cost much, yet they accomplish yet they accomplish so much. This quote was said by Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal is a name you will learn in high school. He created the Pascal's Triangle, which you will also learn in high school. We will hope you have a great week and remember only 16 more days until spring break. Thank you for watching this episode of DTN. Please remember, if you would like to sponsor a segment on DTN, you may do so by emailing us at dfdtn at k12coffee.net. Also, if you would like for your child to be featured on DTN, go ahead and send in your Deerfield Television Network agreement form so they can be featured on the show.